Good morning, all people. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual worship experience. Thanks for joining us on today. Make sure you like, comment, and share this broadcast with your family and friends. Join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for Fire the Word Virtual Bible Study with Pastor Walter Hall and Minister Chantel Cross right here on Facebook Live. All people, it's that time again. Join Bishop Sharon Jones for the Isha Conference 2022, Becoming My Best Self, on Friday, January the 14th through Sunday, January the 16th. Volunteers are needed. If you'd like to volunteer, please contact Lady Denise Hall. Join us at 5.30 a.m. for It's Another Time to Pray every morning on the prayer line at 302-202-1104. Access code 945175. All people, our New Year's Eve service will be held on Friday, December the 31st at 7 p.m. We'll have prayer on Facebook Live at 11.45 with our Chief Apostle. Calling all seniors, join us every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. for our senior prayer call. Everyone is welcome to join in. Join Bishop Sharon Jones every Wednesday at noon for It's Another Time to Pray Noonday Edition via Facebook Live. Please join our ministry on this morning. There are three ways to do so. The first way to give is through our website, www.allpeopleint.org. Click on the Giving tab and give. The second way to give is through Givelify. Type in All People International Church. Our zip code is 32208. You'll see a picture of our leaders, Chief Apostle Officer Jones Sear and Bishop Sharon Jones. The third way to give is via Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign APICJAX. Let's give honor to our leaders, Chief Apostle Officer T. Jones Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. We thank you and honor you both, and we appreciate all you do in ministry. We love you. Pastor Ardell Jones and Pastor Walter Hall, thank you both for all you do in ministry. We love you. Now get ready. Our Sunday morning worship experience starts now. Praise Him upon the high-sounding symbols. Let everything that hath 
prayer. Praise ye the Lord. And on this morning, that is what we've come to do. We've come to praise God. We've come to lift him up. We've come to glorify his name because there's nobody like our Savior. There is nobody like our Redeemer. So come on and take this journey with us on today as we glorify our Savior because all I want
to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted high. Come on, somebody lift the name of Jesus high in this place.
your glory rise. Is there anybody that is happy to be in the house of God just one more time? What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow down before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. When we look back and think back over what God has done for us, he has done some amazing things. I am so happy to see the faces of the people of God on today, this last Sunday of 2021. While you're yet standing, can we give honor to the angel and priest of this house? The Honorable Chief Apostle Arthur T. Jones Sr. We thank God for the woman that stands beside him, Bishop Sharon Patricia Cannon Jones. Bishop Sharon is that one that gets that gives me that call at three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I don't answer. I be sleep, praise Jesus. Sometimes she texts you at four o'clock in the morning. You wake up at 6 30 and say, Lord Jesus already. But I love her, I love her, I love her. I thank God and honor Pastor Ardell Jones and Lady Sharonda Jones. I have been in constant contact with them. And he is doing well on today. We thank God for Pastor Hall and Lady Hall. We thank God for everyone in their respective places. Bishop Stu, but so good to see you. We thank God for all the elders and ministers and everyone alike. We thank God, I thank God for my beautiful wife, the Mrs. Ivy Rayana Michelle Johnson. I thank God for my children. Five of the six are here, present. One is working today, praise Jesus. Elijah is over there. I thank God for the bundle of joy that we have on the way. Baby boy is on the way. He's coming in March, and I'm excited about that. You may take your seat in the presence of God. I don't plan to be before you long. Somebody texted me. I ain't going to call their name, but they sit in the choir stand. Somebody texted me. <laughs> and said, hey, I'm trying to get out of church at a certain time. Not understand. It's the day after Christmas. I got a whole bunch of children. They want to go play toys and games and stuff. But I believe there is a word from the Lord. <clears throat> uh, can you turn with me to uh, open your Bible app uh, to Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 8? And I know y'all probably like, Revelation? You can talk hellfire and brimstone. I'm not, not today. <laughs> Not today, but there is a word to encourage you as we prepare to go into another year, the year of 2022. So turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I'll be reading in your hearing the one verse in the King James Version, and I'll play with some other uh, versions of the Bible. But today, right now, we'll start with the King James Version. And the word of God says... <clears throat> I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and thou hast kept my word and has not denied my name. March 5th, 2021, the debut single Leave the Door Open is released by the American super duo Silk Sonic consisting of artists Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. The lyrics aren't anything complex but are entertaining and they are kind of what we come to expect from the likes of Bruno Mars when it comes to adopting an exciting setting. The storyline is based on the singer trying to get a specific lady to come over for a romantic evening. Uh, this is the person whom he is leaving the door open for, and he is attempting to convince her primarily by letting her know that he is in fact just chilling. In other words, he is not trying to appear attractive by boasting about his skills or even his wealth per se. Rather, it's more like he's an exciting dude himself and his demeanor and resource allocation reflect that reality. 
Indeed, one may likely conclude that the thesis state sentiment of this song, as given by the title and the chorus, is based on the singer's desire to have the addressee come over. But arguably, such as is not necessarily the case. Rather, we can say it's more like the vocalist assuring this lady that when she does come around, he's going to show her a good time. Yes, his residence is pimped out enough to afford him the opportunity to adequately accomplish this task, but more to the point, once again, in terms of his wording, wording's entertainment value is the way he will creatively utilize these resources in the name of adoring her. The different verses of this song provide a story and list the reasons why she should come over. And when she does come over, the chorus of the song says, I'm going to leave the door open. He repeats himself, I'm going to leave the door open, girl, that you feel the way I feel and you want me like I want you tonight. Baby, tell me that you're coming through. My brothers and sisters, on this last Sunday of 2021, though, I believe God is wanting us to know that we don't need Bruno Mars. We don't need any other person to leave a door open for us. God's resume far exceeds that of anyone that we know. He has more than we can think or imagine. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent and omniscient. And he has prepared a personalized and tailored blessing for you. Not only has he prepared it for you and with you in mind, but it is also on the other side of the door. And on December 26, 2021, I want to let you know that he left the door open. Can you turn to a neighbor and tell them he left the door open? Now, that may have been the wrong neighbor because they didn't get excited like I was. Can you turn to another neighbor and say he left the door open? Have you ever had to run to the store late at night. Sometimes my wife sends me, praise Jesus. And the store closes at 10. And you walk up to the door at 9.58 or 10.02, or some of us. And those sliding glass doors still open. Uh, have you ever locked yourself out of your car and had to wait on AAA to come and let you in? And you wait for hours and hours waiting for somebody just to come and let you in. And they finally get you in your car and you let out a sigh of relief. Have you ever watched Let's Make a Deal? And the contestant has three doors to choose from. And by picking the right door, they walk out with the best prize. My brothers and sisters, he has left the door open. I know it's early in the message, but there is there anybody who can testify that 2021 has brought its trials and tribulations, pain and suffering, and grief and sorrow. I just want to encourage you on today that he left the door open. And whatever you're going through, the door is wide open open or whatever you're dealing with the door is open can you open up your mouth and say he left the door open hallelujah 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 in our text today we read of a door that has been opened but this is not the first door that we hear about in the bible uh, we could have talked today on acts 14 and 27 where a door of faith is open uh, we could have talked Hosea where a door of hope is open or Colossians where a door of utterance is open. But in our text written to the church of Philadelphia, the Lord does not censure them or speak of his dis disapproval. This is where he is speaking to the seven churches. Uh, and to this particular church, uh, the church of Philadelphia, Revelation 3 and 8, he says, I see what you've done. Now see what I've done. That's message Bible. King James says, I know thy works. The message Bible says, I see what you've done. Now see what I've done. In the text, there is a reminder to let us know that God sees everything, knows everything, and more specifically, he has seen everything that we've done. The King James says, I know thy works. This is a small reminder that we must understand that this particular door is not open just on salvation alone. The door is open for salvation, but this particular door has some work to be done. The Bible has multiple times where because of our works, we can reap the benefit. Let me give you scripture. Colossians 3 and 23. Whatever you do, 
Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Hebrews 6 and 10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. My brothers and sisters, can I encourage you on today and let you know to not get weary. Some of us are in a season in our lives where it seems as though we are doing the same thing over and over. Year after year, we are serving the people of God. We are serving the homeless. We are being a spouse. We are being a parent. We are spreading the gospel. And it seems as though nobody notices. It seems as though the term thank you is few and far between. There are but a few times you hear thank you compared to the real work you do daily by dealing with the people, praying and serving. We see the need daily, and we seem to never have enough resources, and that sometimes gets us weary. Uh, but we must recognize that God is the supplier, and God will not and has not forgotten about you. I know you've been faithful to ministry. I know you've been faithful to your job. I know you've been faithful to your family. I know you've been faithful in your giving, but don't get weary. Right. Trials have come to knock you off course. The more you serve him, the bigger the trial. Uh, the more you give, the bigger the test. The more you praise him, the harder the enemy attacks. You have been trying to figure out and understand why this has happened in your life. God, I'm doing all I know how to do to serve you. God, I can't sleep at night. God, I'm fasting and praying. God, I need your help. Uh, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> Stop trying to figure it out. His word tells us that we can't rely on our own understanding, but we must trust in the Lord. Dry your eyes because weeping may endure for a night. Uh, but I came to tell you, joy comes in the morning. God has been preparing a blessing behind closed doors. He has something in store for you. He's working behind the scenes, arranging things in your favor, getting it all perfectly in place and at the right time. Uh, you have to be ready to be re receive everything he has for you. So don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. You may not see anything happening right now. Don't be moved by what you see. But God is working, getting your blessing prepared. My brothers and sisters, this is not the time to give up or throw in the towel. For the Bible says, for I know. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. When these words were written and spoken to Jeremiah, the people were desiring an immediate rescue. I'm sorry, it is. It's not going to happen. Uh, they were desiring an immediate rescue. And God promises, uh, I may not rescue you immediately, but I have a plan to prosper you in the midst of your current situation. Okay. God speaks to Jeremiah and, say, and says, I know Y'all want out right now. I, I, I want, you want it fixed right now, but I'm going to prosper you in the midst of your current situation. Uh, there's a pandemic. But God prospers you in the midst of the pandemic. Okay, I'm going to testify. Pandemic started 2020 last year. Okay? Uh, 2019, I had just got promoted in July, uh, and I'm talking a lot today. Uh, July 2019, got promoted to assistant manager, okay? Pandemic ain't started for real, right? Uh, February of 2020, God promotes me to an operations manager, 
right? Uh, thank God, praise Jesus, hallelujah. March, pandemic happens. God, what am I going to do? Uh, God has been faithful uh, that I did not miss a day of work. They said, take all your stuff home and work from home. God is good. Because the, except the children was home. But God is good. The children were home. The wife was home. Breakfast was good for the first few months. Praise Jesus. Uh, <laughs> praise God. But the pandemic is still there. I'm working. I'm serving. I'm, I'm running to Bishop's house to record service. I'm coming to the church to record service. I'm still working. I'm taking care of my children, taking care of six kids trying to go through school. At the time, the oldest is still in high school. So I'm waking up everybody at 8 a.m. in the morning. Hey, school time, wake up. Struggling. Because God, there's a lot. All right. Pandemic is still here. We go through 2019. God blesses. Uh, we get to 2020. I'm sorry, 2020. God blesses. 2021 gets here. And still pandemic is here. We come back to service in April. And God, I'm still working and still trying to provide for my children. My wife breaks her foot in January. I'm still working. I have to now provide and take care of her, not only in my normal duties, but she can't walk. I don't cook, y'all. Yes, I'm big, but I don't cook. Uh, she cooks. So I, now I'm cooking, working, yeah. taking care of children, making sure she's good, rolling her in the wheelchair, grabbing crutches, grabbing a knee scooter in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, she's going to school, too. I forgot about that. She's going to school, too, so I'm literally working, going to get the kids from school, get, pick her up from work, take her to school, come pick her up back from school, come to church. I'm still serving and doing what God has told me to do. In August, a co-worker of mine Husband passes. She's a peer of mine. Need a manager. Me. And my always want to serve and help people. I'll take on her team. I have my team. Her team. Still doing all the things that I've been doing for family, for ministry. They call me into the office. Well, not the office. We still work from home. They call me and say, hey, just want to let you know uh, we see the work that you're doing. I'm like, oh, that's good. You know, thank you so much. We see the work that you're doing. And we, we just, we just want to go ahead and promote you to senior manager. So listen, in the middle of a pandemic, God can still prosper you. Okay. I don't think y'all really understand because nobody got excited. Uh, the fact that you are still sitting in the sanctuary on today. The fact that most of you have active use of your limbs. Most of you, maybe not my children, are in your right mind. You have a reason to give God praise because he prospered you for I know. All right, sit down, y'all. I didn't, I, so I, I'm a, lately I have been calm. Oh, Pastor Ardell going to get me for crying. But I've come to a place to be so grateful for what God has done. If you would have known me five years ago when I lost my job and I lost my wife and I lost, felt like I was losing my children and to have all five of my, sorry, seven of my children home with me for Christmas 
to have a, a position at a job that I didn't even have to apply for. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but he will prosper you in a pandemic. You can also take hold of these words because this is a promise that God has a plan for your life. And regardless of your current situation, he can work through it to prosper you and give you a hope and a future. So don't be weary because God is already working everything out. Ha. The verse continues by saying, I've opened a door before you that no man can slam. So I had to give my testimony. It's been a minute. I'm sorry, but I, I, I feel good. In this verse, Jesus is saying, literally, I have given you a door which I myself have opened for you. This opportunity of the open door was a special gift and privilege. Referring to his authority as stated in Revelation 3 and 7. The open door here evidently refers to the enjoyment of some privileges of honor. And as so far as the language is concerned, the open doors refers to a few privileges. Okay, let me say that again. Referring to his authority as stated in Revelation 3 and 7, the open door here evidently refers to the enjoyment of some privilege or honor and so far as the language is concerned the open door refers to a few privileges one more time referring to his authority in verse 7 the open door here evidently refers to the enjoyment the pleasure of some privilege or honor and so far as the language is concerned, the open door refers to a few privileges. Ooh, uh, that got good to me. Uh, a few privileges. It is not just the open door is here and I just get this one thing. It offers a few privileges. Okay, all right. The open door first gives the ability to do good and testify of his goodness. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, the message Bible says, a huge door of opportunity for good work has opened up here. This door gives an opportunity to continue to share the good news of Jesus as we continue to follow him. This gives reference to Paul when he was speaking to the church of Corinth and let him to know that he had another opportunity to share the gospel. The door gives the ability to tell of the goodness of the Lord. When you come through the door, you have to continue to testify of his grace and mercy. Just because you walk through the door, you can't stop doing what you're doing. Okay? All right. Okay. Uh, the second opportunity uh, the door provides is a way of an escape from our enemy. The children of Israel are a prime example of how we uh, will provide an escape for, from our enemies. They are trapped. Pharaoh is behind them. Uh, the mountains are beside them and the Red Sea is before them. God gives instructions to Moses and provides a way of escape. The Bible tells us when the enemy comes in like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. My brothers and sisters, this door provides protection from our enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy uh, this is my favorite one. The final opportunity this door has is the privilege of access to the heavenly palace. That is that they had an abundant opportunity of one, securing their salvation, and two, the favor of God. Uh, we can argue that this final opportunity is the most overwhelming because it is immediately specified that those Jewish persecutors will be made to humble themselves and that the church would be lightly, would but lightly experience the troubles which were coming upon the world around them. But the more natural interpretation of the phrase an open door is that it refers to access to a thing rather than egress from a thing. Those are like different words. We'll say this. It gives you access and not to walk away from it. Okay? That's what egress is. Learning lesson. 
uh, is that it refers to access to a thing rather than egress from a thing. That we may come to what we desire to approach rather than escape from what we dread. There should be no objection that God has put no restraints as to what he will do for the church of Philadelphia. God has put no restraints as to what he will do for the church of Philadelphia. God has put no restraints as to what he will do for the church of all people international church. Uh, God has put no restraints as to what he would do for Everett in his life. There is no restraints to what God would do for Bishop in his life. There are no restraints that he would do for Claudia in her life. He had given them the most unlimited privileges. <laughs> unlimited privileges. Uh, the temple of salvation was thrown open to them. The celestial city was accessible and the whole world was before them as a field of usefulness and anywhere and everywhere they might do good and at all times they have access to the kingdom of God. Man, who wouldn't want to serve a God? Woo! I don't know about you, but listen. When if I can have unlimited privileges to do good work, and that's all I had to do was do the work of the Lord and still have unlimited privileges to all the things that he can do and will do. For, I, don't, I, I don't know about you, but I get more excited every time I think of this open door. My brothers and sisters, God is letting you know today that there is no limit to what he would do. God himself... Listen, I could give you access to a few things. Just a few things. My life, my house, my children, uh, a few things. Bishop can give you access to a few things. The church, maybe his house if he like you. Uh, he can probably pay you for breakfast and lunch and stuff like that. He can give you access to a few things. Uh, but God can give you access to anything, everywhere, and anybody. See... <laughs> It's good to have access to things. Uh, it's good to have access to go some places. But when you have access to anybody, uh, God, I need access to you. Uh, God gives us access to anything. My brothers and sisters, God has given us complete access to everything that you all need. As he told the church of Philadelphia, God has opened a door so wide that once you take a look inside, everywhere you turn, the favor of God woo, is there. Uh, with access to the kingdom of God and his righteousness means we have made a conscious decision to turn toward God versus anxiety or worry. This door gives us access to all the promises of God. I don't have time to list all the promises of God, but I can tell you that he promised to never leave you nor forsake you. He promised his protection. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. He promised us power. He gives strength to the weary and increases power of the weak. He also promised provision. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. He promised a perfect plan. And all things work together for the good to them that love God. And there's one more. He promises an abundant life. It's in John. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. But I'm so glad that I didn't have to rely on a man or a woman to open the door for me. People can act kind of funny at times. Times and close doors in your face but once God opens the door the text says uh, and no man can shut it <laughs> no one has the power of preventing this for he who controls over all things concedes these privileges to you it is important that we understand that God himself is saying that I have set before you an open door the text provides very little details of this door, of the shape, of the size, of the color, it doesn't even matter. Uh, but the key thing <laughs> to pull out this piece of the text is that the door is already open. 
Okay, so I think y'all missed it, okay? Uh, when we go to a door, there's an action <laughs> that takes place. You either have to push to get in, you have to pull to get in, you have to lift the latch to get in. There's always <laughs> an action to get in the door. Uh, but the fact he sets before me an open door. <laughs> uh, it means that the action that needed to complete it to open the door has already been completed. Uh, so what do you do when the door is already open? Woo! I forgot. I, I'm the cameraman and I'm walking out the camera. What do you do when the door is already open? <laughs> uh, I'm so, so glad you asked. Uh, and we are about to get out of here. I got you, sis. I got you. Uh, my brother and sisters, the only response you can give to continue uh, is, is to continue what you've been doing. Uh, so don't stop serving. Uh huh. Uh, don't stop giving. <laughs> don't stop moving. Don't stop praising. You may be going through right now, but it left the door open. <laughs> uh, your family may have turned their back on you, <laughs> but it left the door open. <laughs> your friends may forsake you, <laughs> but it left the door open. <laughs> People may persecute you, <laughs> but it left the door open. <laughs> David said in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The message Bible says I bless God every chance that I get. Every chance that I get, I bless his name. Uh, my lungs expand with his praises. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. I will praise the Lord all of my life. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. All we have to do is Praise our way through the door. That's the only action that God asks. That you praise your way through the door. Because in the door is healing. In the door, there's deliverance. Because in the door, there's hope. In the door, there's joy. In the door, there's peace. It's in the door. Whatever blessing that you're looking for is in the door. So praise the way in the door. I don't know about you, but I want to walk through the door and give God praise. Is there anybody that got a dance in their feet? A clapping in their feet? They got a song in their feet. Can you open up your mouth and give God praise? Because the door is open. And he left the door open for you. Give God praise. Come on, bless God in this place for open doors. God, we thank you for open doors on this morning. Can we do a prayer of thanksgiving on this morning? Can we say, God, we thank you for open doors on this morning. We thank you for being in our right mind. We thank you for peace. We thank you for the assurance that everything will be all right. We thank you for help. We thank you for being alive. We thank you for being stable. We thank you, Jesus. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for protection. Thank you for grace. Thank you for more grace. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for no limits. Thank you for no limits. Thank you for unmerited favor. Thank you for unlimited privileges. Thank you, God, for being our protector. We say thank you on this morning. We say thank you on this morning. Thank you for the doors. Thank you for the doors that are open. We thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for giving me peace in my mind. God, we tell you thank you. Open doors. We're going to walk in it this morning. Open doors. We're going
gonna step in it this morning. Open doors. We gonna dance in it this morning. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. In a pandemic, you're still faithful. In a pandemic, you're still faithful. And on this morning, in this prayer, we say thank you. God, we say thank you. We say thank you. Let us thank you. Wait in your mouth. Let us thank you. Wait in your house. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Where would we be on this morning if it wasn't for your goodness? Where would we be if it wasn't for your grace? Where would we be if you wouldn't have kept us? We could have been dead, sleeping in our graves. Corona could have taken us out. Heart disease could have taken us out. But God, you've been faithful. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. And we tell you thank you. We tell you thank you all this morning. God keep us. God keep us. God keep us. Keep us ready. We want to be ready when you come back. We don't want to be left here. We don't want to be left here. Don't let us get weary in this race. Don't let us get weary in this race. But God, give us strength for the journey. Give us strength for the journey. Give us a second win. Give us a second win. Push us to our next level. Push us to our next dimension. Push us to more grace in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you on today. God, we thank you for the word on this morning. Open doors. No limits. Unlimited privileges. Access to the throne of grace. Where we can come to you for ourselves. God, you said you ripped the veil. And we can come to you boldly. And on this morning, God, we thank you for every open door. And God, we ask you for a redo. Any doors that you open for us that we didn't step in it boldly. Give us another chance to reclaim that that we lost. In your son Jesus' name, we as a body tell you thank you, God, in advance. And thank you for keeping us. And in 2022, we know you're going to do some amazing things in our life. And we wait in great anticipation on what you're going to do. And this we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, LDE, for the word on this morning. Well, it's time to give. It's time to be blessed. As we prepare to give, let me give an announcement. New Year's Eve service is on Friday. Let's give some instructions because we had some confusion. Service start at 7 p.m. from maybe 7 to 8, 37 to 9. You will be dismissed to go home. But at 11.45 p.m., you are to log on to our Facebook page where our chief apostle will lead us into prayer, taking us into 2022. But that will be done in your homes. He wants you to be safe in your homes. So at 11.45 p.m., log into your Facebook page, the All People International Church page, and our chief apostle will lead us. Well, it's time to give. The ways to give is at the bottom of your screen. You can give through Givelify. You can search for us, All People International Church, or you can search by zip code 32208, and you will see our name there and pictures of our leaders. You can also do it on our website, www.allpeopleint.org, or you can give by Facebook. Our handle is APICJAX. God bless you. Those of you who joined us on Facebook this morning, we're so honored that you let us come into your homes to give you the word of God on today. We ask you to join us on Friday for our New Year's Eve service at 7 p.m. And we ask that on this morning, you walk in those open doors that God has given you, and we pray more grace over your life. God bless you. Amen, Chief Apostle.
God bless you, precious saints. I just want to say this. Elder Join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for Fire the Word Virtual Bible Study with Pastor Walter Hall and Minister Chantel Cross right here on Facebook Live. All people, it's that time again. Join Bishop Sharon Jones for the Isha Conference 2022, Becoming My Best Self, on Friday, January the 14th through Sunday, January the 16th. Volunteers are needed. If you'd like to volunteer, please contact Lady Denise Hall. All people, our New Year's Eve service will be held on Friday, December the 31st at 7 p.m. We'll have prayer on Facebook Live at 1145 with our Chief Apostle. Join us at 5.30 a.m. for It's Another Time to Pray every morning on the prayer line at 302-202-1104. Access code 945175. Call on all seniors. Join us every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. for our senior prayer call. Everyone is welcome to join in. Join Bishop Sharon Jones every Wednesday at noon for It's Another Time to Pray New Day Edition via Facebook Live. Please join to our ministry on this morning. There are three ways to do so. The first way to give is through our website, www.allpeopleint.org. On the Giving tab and give. The second way to give is through Zipify. Type in All People International Church. Our zip code is 32208. You'll see a picture of our leader, Chief Apostle Alton T. Jones, Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. The third way to give is via Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign A-P-I-C-J-A-X. Let's give honor to our leaders, Chief Apostle Austin Jones Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. We thank you and honor you both, and we appreciate all you do in ministry. We love you, Pastor Ardell Jones and Pastor Walter Hall. Thank you both for all you do in ministry. We love you. God has blessed us, and all God people, brought us the rest of from a garage to where we are today. An amazing week. Not just we a local you. church, but an international because God sent me for church's page and stroll down till you see live service hit it and get ready at 1145 to bring the new year in it can be for us nothing but a blessing and as we always have done in all these years past I want you to prepare a special offering that you would give to God, not this house, that you would give to God in honor of the new